Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I am back again. And you know, one of the questions that I got from my OUYA review of the em game emulators, the retro game emulators that it was running, uh, was how they looked on the TV. Do they look close to the originals? And you know, really the only way to play retro games the right way um, is on the original hardware, like on a Super Nintendo or a Sega Genesis and that kind of thing. And uh, what's been happening, of course, is that some games have become very rare. Uh, maybe you don't want to you know, break the console by popping the cartridge in and out. And there's a lot of homebrew games, games that are being made now for old systems that uh, are becoming available and you really want to be able to play them the way they were meant to be played. And uh, you can do that through a flash cartridge like this one. Now, this is the SD to SNES and uh, it looks pretty much like a circuit board that you uh, stick in your Super Nintendo. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, I got mine from Stone Age Gamer and uh, it's not inexpensive. It's a couple hundred bucks, but uh, it gives you a lot of neat capabilities. They also have one that costs a little bit more that comes wrapped around a cartridge, but uh, thankfully my, my house is pretty well uh, uneventful and I don't have to worry about it uh, getting broken or, or, or damaged. But let's take a quick look at it, though. You can see what it consists of. So um, it has a, on the, on the front here, it has a card slot. And you know it's the front because on the back, it says this side to the back of the SNES. So you have an idea as to how this thing uh, gets put in there. It's got a card slot on the top here for an SD card. Uh, you can fit um, essentially the entire library of Super Nintendo games, probably from all regions, uh, uh, on this one little card. It's pretty amazing what uh, you can store on these things these days. So that pops in there. You have a couple of lights to indicate what the, uh, what the device is doing. Uh, it has a battery backup here, but it will also write those battery backup files back to the card as well. And, and sometimes it does it in real time on most games too. So uh, it's a little bit better than the original in that sense. Uh, on the back here, you've got a, a little CPU. This is, I think, one of those FPGA chips. And uh, this is what really is the, the guts of how this thing works. Now, the Super Nintendo, had a lot of custom chips on every cartridge. So if you got a game like Star Fox, it actually had a coprocessor kind of built into the cartridge that would enhance the, the system's capabilities to have it do what a vanilla Super Nintendo couldn't do. Now, Star Fox doesn't yet quite work on this card yet, but the beauty of this is that it's, uh, it's always being updated and they give you new firmware on a regular basis and all you gotta do is download it and stick it on the card and you are good to go. So let's take a look real quick at a find which camera I'm gonna go to here uh, and pop this thing in the Super Nintendo and make sure I get it in the right way and you can see how it works. So you put it in just like a cartridge and you flip it on. When it loads up, you are presented with a menu here. And uh, here's a game that I, I really kind of got into. It was never released here. It's called The Firemen. And uh, this is a regular Super Nintendo game. And I can just uh, hit this here and uh, it will load up off the SD card and basically get us uh, going with a with a regular Super Nintendo game. And there you go. Um, so that's how it works. It's, it's really that simple. You just go through the menu and pick out a game and uh, you're off and running. Uh, what happens too is that if you were to hit the reset button, uh, it will come back to the game that we just loaded. So to start from scratch, you need to turn the Super Nintendo off and then turn it back on again. Now, where this thing gets really interesting is that uh, homebrew applications, you know, things that are being made now in the modern era are also available um, to download onto this thing. So a lot of these games just run in, uh, you know, an emulation uh, on, on an emulator, but you can also run them on the Super Nintendo. And uh, there's a uh, kind of a hacking movement going on for Super Mario World, which was that awesome game that was packed in with all the original Super Nintendos back in the day. And um, there's been a lot of hacking going on. And this particular one uh, is using this, uh, I don't want to say it's a chip because it's kind of a virtual chip called the MSU-1 and it's emulated on that big chip you saw on the, uh, the back of the uh, SD2 SNES. And what this is, and you can hear it, is that it's playing um, digital audio, which we would normally be at, back in the day of the Super Nintendo, would be in the realm of like a CD-ROM game. So you remember that the Sega Genesis had the Sega CD. It wasn't all that successful, but it was a way to introduce digital audio into games and full motion video and that kind of thing. Super Nintendo never had that. Uh, it was about to, uh, Sony and, and Nintendo had paired up to uh, work on a project together, but they broke up and the PlayStation became the PlayStation and the Super Nintendo kept on on its track. And uh, But nevertheless, the system had the capability to do this kind of stuff. So um, you can hear here that the you know the digital music is uh, giving you that uh, that kind of CD-ROM quality here. And you know, the game itself is pretty cool. You can check it out. Some other YouTube videos go into more depth on how this game works, but um, pretty cool. It's a hack again of the original 
um, Super Mario World, and it's a whole new adventure that uh, this guy's been putting together. It's pretty cool, so it's worth checking out. Now, here's another neat thing here. Let's reset the system again. And uh, again, this is in the homebrew section here. Um, this is called Super Road Blaster. Now, Road Blaster is a classic laser disc game, which was back in the old days of the arcade. They had these, uh, remember, like Dragon's Lair and that kind of stuff. And you can uh, get this game, by the way, as well as Dragon's Lair on the iPhone iOS store. Uh, but what it is is a pretty much a full motion video that you control by hitting the controller at the right time. So may or may not be the most fun thing in the world to play, uh, but what it does do is show you what you can do with something like this. Now this game is uh, huge by Super Nintendo standards, several hundred megabytes. And I'll turn the volume down just a little bit here. Um, and the video quality is really good. In fact, this came out for, um, in addition to the uh, Sega C, uh, it came out for the Sega CD. It never came out for the Super Nintendo. This is a a project that somebody uh, uh, just did just to see if they could make it work and he ported the Laserdisc version over here. And as you can see the, the full motion video runs really well. Uh, you can see the little yellow light here running. It is reading all of those video files off the card uh, and streaming it through the original 16-bit hardware of the Super Nintendo. And uh, it, it works, it is exceptional um, actually how well this works. Uh, and it gives you an idea of what a, a, a CD version of the Super Nintendo would have been like. It probably really would have bested the uh, the Sega, the, just the amount of colors available, it's a, it's a pretty um, impressive uh, uh, game and it runs really well. Again, it's not, it's all on rails, you really can't control it very well. Um, you can't really control it at all actually, you're just kind of hitting the, the button when it tells you to. Um, but it's still amazing for what you can do with, uh, with just an old bit, bit of 16-bit hardware with a little modern ingenuity wrapped in there. So, um, so that's the, uh, the SD2 SNES. I got this again at the Stone Age Gamer. Um, it's available at a few other places and it comes and goes. So you got to kind of put your name on the wait list and have them email you when uh, it becomes available. But it is a great way to uh, archive all of your old games and play some of the games maybe that you never could play. And then some of this homebrew stuff as well, all on an original Super Nintendo. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.